about this program, that there are serious breaches of the capital on this important day, and that these protesters are causing violence, and that the House is in recess, at least as we speak. Just reflect on that. I mean, this is you know, a result of what's been ginned up on the ground by the president and his loyalists. Just talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I think that there are probably two points to be made about that. The first, as you said, is that really this is all on the president and all on his enablers like Senator Cruz in the Senate and Congressman uh, Brooks in the House who have indulged him in the fiction that the election was stolen. If Republican leaders outside of the presidency had the courage to stand up to the president's false claims, uh, it's likely that a lot less of this would be happening. So this, so the first point is this is what's happen happens when you uh, divorce yourself from reality and feed fiction. The second point, at a, so, at a broader level, since this is an international show, is how incredibly damaging this is to America's standing across the globe. For a you know, hundred years, America has stood for democracy, has stood for the peaceful transition of power, and has. Uh, rightly or wrongly sort of lectured to the rest of the world about how to do it right, holding ourselves up as an exceptional example of how democracy should function. We're not going to recover that anytime soon, uh, if at all. And what's happening today will be uh, touted by our opponents, by opponents of democracy, of opponents of freedom, as evidence that democracy is, is ill-conceived, across the globe, it is a reward to authoritarians everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rosenzweig, you're absolutely correct. It's an international show, and also it's a, it's a show for our American viewers across our PBS stations. So I wonder what you make and what they might make of the lateness to the party of defending democracy. In other words, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who may lose his majority position there, was very clear for the first time in four years, at least that I can recall, saying that there is no constitutional right to overturn the, the votes of the people, that it was a massive majority that uh, President-elect Joe Biden won, that the courts have spoken, that all the local election officials have spoken, and that this would be just a, a march to perdition, basically. What do you make of, of him saying that now. How, how seriously do you take that? Well, I take it somewhat seriously. We, you know, the human condition is one of constant error and, and constant changing of one's mind. And so I'm happy to welcome Senator McConnell uh, to the right side of history now, albeit uh, far too late for my taste. Uh, to a large degree, uh, the last four years have been an exercise in boiling a frog in water. Uh, and it has finally occurred to Senator McConnell that he has to jump out. Others like Senator Romney jumped out much earlier. Still others like Senators Cruz and Hawley have yet to jump out and they're eventually going to get boiled to death by the authoritarian impulse that President Trump has unleashed. So while I certainly think that Senator McConnell is far too late to the game of opposing uh, President Trump's authoritarian impulses, at least we can say that he came to the right answer in the end. And I suppose that's small comfort. It won't comfort me a lot, but it's better than nothing. Um, not before, uh, you know, these protesters breached his chamber. Uh, I, I uh, wonder, because you were in the Department of Homeland Security, what should they have done? They knew these protests were coming. What, how is it possible that, you know, police around the Capitol are unable to control that crowd? How is it possible? We see them walking through the halls with their flags and their banners inside the Capitol building. Well, the Capitol Police and the D.C. Police have a lot of experience dealing with First Amendment uh, protests of this sort. And they have come to expect uh, that the protesters follow a, a generalized set of rules. They don't want to overreact and be violent towards people who are simply exercising their political rights. I suspect that when we do an after action report of what has just what is transpiring, even as we speak, we'll find that the Capitol Police underestimated the potential for violence, underestimated the threat to the integrity of the Capitol building, thought they could handle it, and uh, and were mistaken. I have several friends who work on the 
on, on the Capitol Police Force and several others who work on D.C. police. And I'm sure right now they are reflecting about how they wish that just three hours ago they'd taken a stronger stance. But you have to feel mm-hmm. for them. I mean, if they'd overreacted, uh, if they'd used rubber bullets and tear gas, uh, we'd be criticizing them now. So they, they've got a very, very hard line to run, a hard line to hoe. You're, you're right. But, I mean, to be fair, the mayor of Washington did call out the National Guard and got the approval for National Guard forces because she predicted that there was going to be this kind of trouble. Let me just read to you yes. some of what Donald Trump is tweeting right now as we speak and as those protesters are speaking inside the Capitol building. He says, and he's obsessed by reversing the election result, Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our constitution, giving states a chance to certify a corrected set of facts, not the fraudulent or inaccurate ones which they were asked to previously certify. USA demands the truth. I mean, is that pouring, you know, oil on the fire? Yes, it's pouring kerosene on the fire. Donald Trump quite literally has incited this violence. Uh, And that is a crime. It's an impeachable offense. We probably won't do either of those in the 15 days that are left to him. But once he leaves office, he will be remembered as a president who attempted to incite violence in the United States Capitol and attempted to steal an election. He is or should be remembered as the worst president in American history, and more importantly, as a president who traduced American norms of peaceful transition of power, of rule of law, of democracy, in ways that are going to resonate down the annals of American history for at least the next 50 years. I do not know how the country recovers from this. I hope that... Uh, in the aftermath of the of the inauguration, both the Biden Department of Justice and other prosecutorial authorities actually initiate criminal investigations of this and take appropriate action. Um, spoken as a, I think you're a former Republican, certainly you're not a supporter of the president, but, but you are a conservative. So what you're saying is actually, you know, really, really important from, from your perspective. I just want to say, uh, read to you, Kind of building on what you've just said, you know, Ali Soufan, the former FBI um, agent who was instrumental in some of the interrogations after 9-11, he is an anti-terror expert. And he says, in many other contexts, such actions and rhetoric would be considered tantamount to incitement to terrorism. Um, Talking about what we've just been speaking about. Um, That's a pretty that's a pretty important thing that he said. And I want to ask you also, because all of this is an attempt to get Mike Pence and to pressure him to do what he can't do. Mike Pence read out a statement or had it read out before he went into that chamber. He was clear that he wanted it public. He basically said that he would not be able to defy the will of the people. And this is what President Trump's own impeachment lawyer said about this matter. Some have speculated that the vice president could simply say, I'm not going to accept these electors, uh, that, that, that he has the authority to do that under the Constitution. And I actually don't think that's what the Constitution has in mind. If that were the case, any vice president could refuse Andy any election. So that's Jay Sokolow, who was um, the president's uh, lawyer, um, and, and, and now saying what many Republicans um, clearly believe. Again, speculate, I know it's dangerous to speculate, but between now and Inauguration Day, what are we going to be facing? Oh, if I had that crystal ball, I'd, I'd win a prize. Um, here's, here's what I think is, is likely. Uh, the president's inability to change the outcome of the election is increasingly driving him to taking as much unilateral action as he can. There are some areas of American law, like issuing presidential medals of freedom, which he's done, or issuing pardons, which he's done, where he truly does have unlimited unilateral power. But those are few and far between. What I fear is that he will attempt to exercise unilateral power in other areas where he really doesn't have it and where it will be incumbent upon the uh, institutions of American democracy to resist him. 
For example, he might seek to start a criminal investigation of Joe and Hunter Biden and appoint a special counsel. It would be incumbent upon the attorney general to resist and reject that effort. He might order the military to take provocative military action in the Middle East. Uh, it would be incumbent upon the civilian leadership of the Department of Defense and the uniform leadership of the military to resist and reject those kinds of suggestions. He might attempt to unilaterally uh, impose economic sanctions on countries that recognize Joe Biden as president-elect. It would be incumbent upon the career civil servants in the departments of Treasury and Commerce to resist and reject those. He might try to play with the census. The list is almost endless as to the types of things he can try and do, and all of them ought to be rejected to the maximum extent practicable. And we do see um, those institutions, at least, talking out and rejecting those kinds of um, issues that you just raised. Paul Rosenzweig, thank you so much. It's so difficult at this moment, even amid history being made, to fathom what's going on. In any event, thank you very much for your perspective.